All right, so to do cuff pressure check, you're going to need a couple of things. You're going to need your pressure gauge, which is going to tell you what the pressure is inside the cuff as you're doing the procedure. And that way, when you're doing MLT, MOV, you can associate a pressure to MLT or MOV, so you need this. And while this is going on, the ventilation of the patient is never disrupted. So if you're on a bag valve tube system like this, the patient should still be ventilated. <laughs> If they're on a mechanical ventilator, then of course the ventilator would still be delivering breaths to the patient. You'll also need your syringe. It's a good idea to probably pre-charge your syringe to around 3 to 4 cc's, and typically a 10 cc syringe should be okay. You need to find your pilot balloon, which is right here. You can see this one is quite distended. And when you can touch this and feel this amount of pressure inside there, that same pressure is now inside the trachea exerting that same pressure inside the cuff against the trachea. So we need to make sure that we manage that properly. Is you'll need this three-way stopcock, right? So when you grab the three-way stopcock, this particular one has two female lower lock ends and a slip style male end. And it's the slip style male end that goes into the pilot balloon in order to uh, unseat the valve inside here so you can connect everything together to the gauge as well as the syringe. Now judging from the amount of pressure in here, I might simply take a little bit more gas out of my syringe instead of having two or three, I might go with about two. But we'll see what happens here. Now, I'm going to take the syringe. I'm going to attach it to one of the female lure lock ends. I'm going to take my off tab of my stop cock, and I'm going to place that off tab to the slip tip. Remember, it's the slip tip that goes to the cock, yeah. right, to the pilot balloon. I'm now going to take my pressure gauge tubing and attach it to the other lure lock female end. It might take a little bit of elbow grease to get that sucker on there, but eventually it's going to go on. Now the reason I've got this little bit of volume inside my syringe is so that when I depress the plunger of the syringe, I'm going to send the volume that's in the syringe into the pressure gauge to give it some pressure. Now with a cuff pressure like this, you probably would be able to skip this step. But if you have a, a pilot balloon that has very little gas inside of it, remember the pressure in the pilot balloon is going to be a lot higher than inside the gauge. So as soon as you connect the system together, the low pressure is in the gauge, the high pressure is in the cuff. Once the ports are all communicating with each other, the pressure inside the cuff is going to diminish because that gas volume is going to leave the cuff and go either into the syringe or into the gauge itself. So all of a sudden you'll have a big leak. And that's going to freak you out because you're not expecting to get that time. So pressurize the gauge. I'm going to pressurize it to 20 centimeters of water pressure. And you can kind of see in doing so, I still, it only took maybe 5 cc's to do that. Or not 5 cc's, 0.5 cc's to pressurize the gauge to 20. I know, I'm now going to take the three-way stopcock and attach it to my pilot balloon so it stays on there, on the valve. Now what I'm going to do, and watch the pressure gauge. Maybe uh, somebody can hold this for me so you guys can see. Yeah, you might have to come over. Do you mind being in the video? Right on. Okay. So now I'm going to open it up, so all three ports are going to communicate. And watch what happens to that pressure gauge. I can't see it, but I can bet you it's probably going to be, the needle will probably be buried on the gauge and be in excess of 100 centimeters of water pressure. So let's see what happens. What would the pressure go to? Over 100. Over. Over 100. So there's a lot of pressure inside there, right? Now what I need to do is uh, grab my stethoscope. So if somebody can grab my stethoscope, it's on the blue or purple holder at the end there. Thanks, Roy. I need to use my stethoscope because now I have to find minimal leak. So to do minimal leak, I need to withdraw gas out of that cuff until I hear a leak. Now with this pressure being as high as it is, I can go with large increments of removal of volume from the cuff to find that leak. I don't have to be really, finet, like, really fine with my withdrawal of gas because that safe pressure should be somewhere in that 20, 25 centimeters of water pressure range. So I can withdraw a lot of gas and probably not hear a leak, right? So while the patient's being ventilated, I'll put my stethoscope in my ears. I'm going to leave one port out, right? One of your pieces out so that I can talk to you and still kind of get an idea of how loud I am. But you'll take the other part, make sure you've got the diaphragm in the right spot. Find the thyroid cartilage and just simply go down a little bit, you know, from the thyroid cartilage. Now because this is right here and I want to capture it on the video, I'll simply go on this side by meaning the same thing. Now remember, these mannequins, you can't hear the gas escaping, so you kind of have to simulate that with your partner. But you'll start taking the gas out of the system. So, listen on inspiration. 
no leaks. I'm going to take a bunch of gas out. I like that. What's the pressure now, Annette? Uh, 60, sorry. 60, still a lot of pressure in there, right? So the Tyler ventilates, no leak. So I'm going to take a little bit more gas out, no leak. Just tell me what the pressures are. 50. A little bit more gas out before the next breath. 42. No gas, no leak. 38. Still no leak. 25. No leak. So now when I get to this range, I got to be a little bit more finesse, or add a little bit, use a little bit more finesse with withdraw, withdrawing gas, because big increments, well, if I take 10 centimeters out now, the leak could occur anywhere in those 20, in those 10 centimeters. So what's the pressure? Right about 24. 24, so I'll take a little bit of gas out. About 23. Still no leak, a little bit more gas out. 22. Still no leak, a little bit more gas out. 20. 20. No leak. A little bit more gas out. About 19. 19, I hear a leak. So if I hear a leak at 19 centimeters of water pressure, that's my minimal leak. Took enough gas out to hear a small amount of leak. I'll put a little bit more gas into my syringe, or into my pilot balloon. Now you're about 22. And the leak's gone. What's the pressure at? 22. So leak's gone at 22. So my minimal occluding volume is 19. Sorry, my minimal leak is at 19, my minimal occluding volume is at 22 cc's. So I found out what that was. Now what I do is I'll shut the three-way stopcock off to the pilot balloon and then detach the, the uh, three-way stopcock from the pilot balloon. And the leak should still be, should still uh, not be there. Okay. Once you're done with this, simply get all the pressure out of the system by opening the ports up and you can leave this aside until you do a further assessment on your patient. So every time you assess your patient, you'll be assessing the position of the endotracheal tube inside the patient's airway, right? You're looking at the vital signs, listen to the patient's chest, do any kind of airway maintenance that you need to do. You'll also do cuff pressure check to ensure that you've got just enough gas pressure inside that cuff to create a seal so you have no leak. So that's what minimal occluding volume means just enough gas volume in the cuff to get rid of any leak while exerting the least amount of pressure on that internal wall of the trachea. Sound good? Give me an aight. Aight. Right on. Okay. Nice to help, Tyler.